Hey folks, Swip here, and welcome on back to my hardcore Minecraft world, where today is another comment of the day. Comment of the episode? I still don't know what to call these things, but it's a very important one because we are starting off volume two. We filled the first book in the last one. First question coming in from William Estes. Build a ruins biome, please. I want to see someone build in the theme of ruins and you seem like the person to do the job. Like how they portray other games and such, you know, like Breath of the Wild World, only in Minecraft. Pretty much the aftermath of a world wiping apocalypse, which having zombies, skellies, and weird exploded green things makes so much more sense. This is actually something that I tried in my old survival world, the main building with whip survival world of, I built a giant ruined castle that was near my end portal. And so I went with the lore that the ender dragon came out and completely ruined the castle. Some dragon came out of the portal somehow, blew up the castle, and then we put the skeleton of a dragon nearby. And I thought it was a really, really cool, just kind of mini story to exist out there. It was something that I didn't fully finish, but I was definitely going around that track. But that is also something that I would love to do inside this world. Just more things around as we're exploring to be able to see more age, I guess you could say, to everything that we have made here. Just adding some older ruined structures makes it look like not everything is of the current era and adds a lot more history into the world itself. It makes it look like this place has existed for a long time. I don't know about doing an entire biome with it as that doesn't really make sense too much with how I build. But one example we do have here is the iron farm at spawn where we have this mystical magical element holding this thing together. Like it's some magic trying to keep the shape of the building that was here before and then the ruins of all the cobblestone in. That was something that I tried early on into the series and I did like how it looked and it's something that I've been meaning to get back to but just kept forgetting. I will say though, I do like the idea of doing some sort of ancient civilization and then making it look like people are trying to live within the ruins of a completely destroyed city. Like something like that could be really cool. Basically saying there's this really powerful ancient society around somewhere in this world that at its height had this just massive, incredible capital city that now is just a bunch of rubble and walls sticking up all over there. And we can make it look like there's new people trying to live within the wreckage. Another ruined structure that we do have is all the way over here of I tried along the road just for a point of interest is making it so you have to go through this like old ruined outpost that I thought was pretty cool. Just a box here that we tore down and then that, and then you can see the rubble of where the wall might have stood going across this valley. I would love to do more things like this. So the ruins will definitely keep incorporating throughout the world. I just need to keep finding good spaces for them that aren't going to interrupt other things that I already have planned. Question two coming in from Ashley Ray. Would you consider doing a fan art competition to make a set of paintings based on size for scenic postcards from around your world? Have different categories based on the size or location for the postcard or even do a category for a crest type painting for each name town slash area too. In theory, I absolutely love the idea of this. And with the new data-driven paintings, I think they're called in Minecraft where you can add your own custom paintings through resource packs and data packs. That could be something fun to involve within this world and try and get some extra fun things in here. But I will say whenever I hear a fan competition to create artwork for me, it does make me cringe a little bit because I don't like the idea of using fans almost as like a way to exploit and get free labor because I know a lot of you all would absolutely love to create artwork and have it shown within series and everything in here. And then with the number of people that come into fan art competitions and things, I almost prefer for myself just to find an artist that I know and that I is already making fan art within the community and reaching out to them and say, hey, I would love to commission you and work with you on this. If anything, that's how all of the channel art on my channel has been done for the last like three years. Most of it's been done by Oxy, who their full name is Oxidization, Oxidization MC. They do a lot of the channel art for me. And they actually started making fan art of me back in Empire Season 1. 
and Gemini Tay and Mythical Sauce is like a lot of the Wither Rose Alliance stuff from Empire Season 1. And I absolutely love the style that they did. So I reached out to them and started commissioning them. And now they do a lot of the art for my channel. So if I were to do something to add more artwork into the game and custom paintings and everything, like those little pop-up ones that have been at the beginning of videos recently, like, hey, here's the plan of what's happening. Oxy has uh, done all those. I've been commissioning them to make even more. So I think that's something, the route that I would go down. So all I can say really is it would be really cool to do something like this, but I think it's a little, I, I don't want to be seen as trying to exploit people or anything, uh, like using my creator position of power and being like, hey, who wants to make free art for me? And then I'll pick one of you to actually pay to do it. No, that just, that just sounds wrong. Like I would hate being in that situation. So I don't want to do it to all of you because it's kind of weird and a little shady. I do love the idea of custom paintings in this world and the custom crests especially would be something that we can do, but I don't believe paintings in Minecraft currently support transparency and pixels. I know that was something that I used to do in a lot of the old paintings that I was making in my original building with whip texture pack. And then I think 113 or maybe 114, that update ruined it to where you can't have transparent pixels and paintings anymore. And it's been sitting unfixed on the bug tracker since. So that's a big bummer. Maybe it'll be fixed one day. That would be lovely. I can talk with some friends and see how they're doing it because I know there's a way you can take like an item and add a custom display entity tag to it and basically give it its own texture. So I, I needed to go into that building. It's something I can look into a little bit more. And if I can come up with a way that seems fair to everybody and something that would be a benefit across the board for everybody involved, then, then we'll move forward on it. Any sugar cane? How... How am I always... I need a new sugarcane farm. Right, this will keep me flying for now, I guess. Question three coming in from Emmy Sophia. Hey, Flip, do you have plans to transform the stronghold? Amazing video and build as always. For the stronghold, that is way off in this direction. And outside of hooking up the nether portal to get into the end quickly, I haven't really done much out that way. Okay, minus the castle and the mountain and the custom train project over here. Like I haven't done anything out here really. Like we haven't done much, okay? Also, we will get back to this project soon. I've just been sitting on it because I don't really like how this turned out too much. I think I'm gonna lop that all off the top and level it off a little bit more. But the stronghold, if you are not super familiar with this world, the stronghold that I used to get to the end is somewhere out here. Yes, you can see that little bit of cobblestone right over there. The only thing else I have in this area currently is a slime farm and a light blue flower dye farm right over there. So we haven't done too much in this space, but we can take a, a look at it from our blimp above the slime farm to let that thing run a little bit. And the entrance to the stronghold is right there. My idea that I've had, which I'm kind of having to rethink here because we have ocean on that side and we have ocean on this side. But originally I wanted to take this entire swamp here and just sink it down like 30 to 40 blocks and turn it into a massive lush cave biome and then you could basically just walk into the portal which would be like its own sunken ancient structure down there some shrine built up around it so i might still do that but i feel like with ocean and ocean it's a little weird to randomly have a place down sunken in that's not flooded with water so i might try and rethink how we're going to do it but the idea of this all being here in the swamp isn't my favorite but i'm gonna try and make it work with what i can do right now so i'm gonna keep moving forward on it but yeah i think we're gonna do a massive structure above here unfortunately though you do need to go all the way down to the end portal and then get in because if you drop into it you will take damage as your all of the fall damage from the entire distance will add up which i thought they had fixed but i saw in another stream of somebody else trying it that it does not work so I'm a little I'm a little cautious about dropping into the end portal too much because I don't want to get myself killed by going to the end. So I would love to reveal this to the surface in some way and have a way to like walk down here and jump in. That could be super cool. And then uh, we can reach out here to this amazing build that we've finished up, which I am thinking about this ripple here of extending it and making it more dynamic as it goes. A lot of people have left comments saying it's a little too flat, which I totally get. It was a first attempt at doing some sort of mathy structure going all the way around like that. So we'll we'll see what we can do in there. Last question today coming in from Jenny or Jenny Honest. I think it's so funny that you have like this 8,000 plus day old world. We are currently just over 7,000. We are, I still got a thousand to go. Come on now. 
a giant city, two world trees, and multiple custom landscapes, and you still live and store some valuable stuff in your small starter home. I mean, to be fair, I've spent all the time building up all those other things. You think I've spent any amount of time building a storage room for everything? No, 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 no. That being said, I do constantly come back to my starter house because I love it. I think it's so fun to be able to come back to the first thing that I built in the world and still be like, yeah, this is my house. Look at my front porch. It's beautiful. It's so colorful. We've got Oliver still chilling here since forever ago. But in reality, that's my wood storage room over there. My stone storage room is down there. I have this entire city basically as different storage rooms throughout. My donkey and my mule are hanging in there. My horse, I don't know where they are. We have right over here is where all of my netherite stuff is stored inside. So we have all those things whenever I need them. And I really try and just live throughout the entire world. So we've got stuff all over the place. I don't really say that I live in the house. Sure, I come back there every once in a while to get some goodies. But like all of my wool is down there in the sheep farm. And then everything else is just stored throughout the entire world. So there's reasons to go throughout and keep exploring and touching base on things. Like coming up to the city here, pumpkin and melon farm and the storage for those is right in that building. And we can come down the street a little ways and we have all of our color storage in here for concretes, glass, dyes, and candles are all within this building. We have the glass factory that we recently made over right there. And what I'm trying to get out is that I'm living in the world. Sure, that's the house that I might sleep in every once in a while, but we're experiencing and living in this entire world. Like we have all of the armor trims minus the new 1.21 versions over in that building there. We've got all of our foliage elements in the market right here. So I'm constantly jumping around to doing things in different places and getting blocks all over. And then like we have all of our foliage, not foliage, all of our ground blocks right here. So like all the dirts and everything are inside this structure, red sands up there and all that good stuff. Copper aging facility is underneath the factory that we have right over here behind the market. And then this is a big loop that just connects back down into the quarry where I have all of the stone storage going on. So everything that I am doing, I'm experiencing and running around this entire place. Sometimes you don't see it all the way on camera every single time I do it, but I'm I'm living like my entire house, I guess, if you're thinking in Minecrafty terms, is everything that's around the tree. Like all of my storage rooms are just structured around the big tree right here. So yeah, I guess I do sleep in there, but I don't I don't really consider it like my base. It's where I leave all my shulker mess out in front because I do constantly come back here. But slowly, I am getting rid of things in here. Like, I need to build a nether storage room soon to get rid of all of this stuff. And then we need to get all these things just sorted and moved where they're supposed to go and all these things. But slowly but surely, these are actually emptying. They're all just kind of junk chests right now that don't really have a place to call home. Or I just have been too lazy to actually move them to where they're supposed to go. But I do like the nostalgic feel of just having to come back over here and get everything and revisit the place where I started. That was something when I was in my last survival world, like the big one building with whip, that I fully stopped going to back to where I started the game in the first starter house because I moved everything out of it and I had absolutely no reason to go in there. And after a while, I just kind of, I was like, wait, I just never really visit that. That's kind of sad. So that was something that I made a conscious decision this time that as I exist in this world, I don't really want to leave things behind, like the skeleton from Halloween that I totally forgot about, but that's okay. And I want to keep having reasons to go back to all the different things that I've built and all the different structures, so I don't really build too many things in this world that are just kind of to look at. Every time there's a new base that we're working on or a new structure that we're building, there's either a reason to go buy it on to travel to something else, or there's a reason to visit that thing itself, whether it's a sheep farm or who, who knows what. Also, if I bother to spend any time upgrading the size of the house up there, then how would I build other things in the world? Come on now, that thing's enough space for me. And if I'm filling up fully with blocks, that means I should have built something using all those blocks. That's that's definitely the theory I'm going with. But that's going to do it today. Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like down below if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're brand new. And with that, my friends, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Or you should leave more comments. Thanks.